Good afternoon. I'd like to walk through one of the activities with you uh, related to the tasks from page two and page three. So one question in particular that I wanted to go through was this one. So for question D, we were going to look through the values 2, 5, 9, 14, and we need to take those values and then try and transpose them onto a t-chart. So in order to do that, we have to first identify the headings in the t-chart itself. So we're going to start with the term number, and that usually goes in the top left-hand section. And then the term value is usually put into the top right. Now, as you recognize those values in graphing, you may also identify that the term number in this case would be identified as the x, and the term value would be shown as the y. So. In the numbers itself, we're looking at 2, 5, 9, 14. That means that the values on the y side should be 2, 5, 9, and then 14. And the x values are in sequence, or sequence, counting by ones. So we should have, and they partner up. So we've got 1, 2, the third term, and then we've got the fourth term. Okay, so uh, one other thing that you may have seen is that each section would be separated using a line just so that you can better visually identify which term is related to which value. The next thing that we would need to do when we're looking at uh, or creating a t-chart, which is what this is, is try and understand patterns that we're seeing in the values. Because if we can find a pattern, then we can find a missing value. For example, if we wanted to try and find the term value when x was 5, how would you find it? Well, you can look at the patterns for all of the term values in sequence from 1, 2, 3, and 4 to try and predict what the fifth value might be. The term numbers are increasing by 1 each time. You can see that pretty easily because it's counting 1, 2, 3, 4. So 5 would be the next one in sequence. That means the term values, as they are changing, we can inspect their common difference. That's an important term. Common difference. We can inspect their common difference, which is how much they're changing by each time. And this one, for the first comparison between term value 1 and our term numbers value, uh, number 1, its value, and then term number two's value, we're looking at the difference between two and five, and it seems to be increasing by three. Is there the same common difference between the term value for term number two and term number three? Five becomes nine. The common difference is not common after all. It's not common, so we can't quite call that the common difference. However, we can call it a difference or a change over time. So we only use that term common difference when the values are in common, meaning if it was increasing by 3 or increasing by the same number each time. But in this case, it's not. But we might be able to find another pattern that could help us. When we go from value the first value to the second value, we're increasing by 3. When we go from the second value to the third value, we're increasing by 4. That means the increase here is increasing by 1 each time. Now. When we move from the term, the term number 3, we look at the value, it's 9, and we go from that value to the next one, it's increasing, so the term number 4's value is 14. So now the increase is by 5. So you'll see that we've looked at the first pattern when we're comparing the values. It seems They seem to be increasing by 1 each time. But if we compare the, the patterns that we've seen, we can identify that that's 
each of the values is increasing by 1 each time. That means that when we're trying to find, using the patterns, when we're trying to find the value for the fifth term, we would expect that the value of the fourth term would be increased by 6. Why? Well, because 6 is 1 more than 5, and that follows our second stage of the pattern that we've identified on the screen. So what is the purpose of this? Well, the whole idea behind this question is just to show you how to organize your t-chart, how to identify and label the value represented in your, well, we could call it the x-axis if we were going to graph it, and we could call it the y-axis if we were going to graph it too, but we don't have to use x and y. We can use, if we're looking at a situation that's real related to real life, we can identify the term number related to a value or a term included in the problem. We can also call the term value something relative or a letter relative to whatever it might be in the real world application. We'll get to this later. When we want to identify variables for our term number and our term value, the variables are usually related to what it is, what the problem is addressing. So for example, if we were looking at number of drink in boxes, well, when we look at number, ideally we would want to use a variable n because n represents number. So we could call variable n for number. And then usually you'll see v for value. Now just to cover one final thing, when you're creating variables, I'd like you to create something called let statements. Now a let statement is a statement that informs all the readers about what your variable is. So what you would say is let n represent the term number. That's a let statement. You could also say another let statement, let v represent the term value. So it clearly explains what the variable is to represent or, or describe what's happening in that column. So n represents the term, term number and v represents the term value. So I hope this helps.